Well, hello and good morning, friends. It's Sunday morning. I have a game in... Mm, just under two weeks. I've decided to do something stupidly ambitious with Kit, obviously. My stupidly ambitious plans involve this incredibly beautiful piece of silk brocade, which I only have five metres of, which sounds like a lot until you think about Victorian dresses. So this is kind of what I'm aiming for. This is from... The Victorian Dressmaker by Isabella Pitcher. You can buy it directly from her. There's a volume two coming out relatively soon. You should get it. I think you have to be quite an experienced sewer to work really well with this, but it has the whole Victorian period. It has the underwear as well. You kind of got to figure out on your own from that point, but the patterns are really good. And have, you know, seen me in good stead. My idea for this brocade was this tea gown, basically, so I have something ostentatious to lounge around in. You're still wearing a... It, it looks lovely, but you're still wearing a corset and a bustle and everything underneath this. I also have a pattern, uh, an actual paper pattern, which... which is this guy. I didn't buy this pattern, this was just given to me. It's been cut out in a size 10. I am 90% sure that last time this is what I made my dress out of, and it seemed to fit. So I'm going to do that incredibly reckless thing and just kind of proceed on the grounds that it was fine last time, it'll probably be fine this time. I'm going to have to build a kind of underbodice. I've got a main pattern with darts, front closures-ish, that looks very much like this, but not as fancy. And then the kind of loose flowing brocade is going to get built over the top. In my head, this works. I'm probably going to have a more tailored uh, fake undergown than this sort of very loose and flowy one just because the contrast fabric I've picked, I don't have a lot of it. I may not do an underskirt. I've designed my dresses this time around so that they have kind of a bodice, a bustle, and then a separate underskirt. So this is one of the ones that I'm still working on. It probably won't be this exact one that I wear underneath it, but I could, and that just means that I have less stuff to make. Again, not because of time, but because of fabric. But also a little bit because of time. Okay, so first things first, I have cut out the underbodice from just some random cotton I had li lying around. It's basically lining, it doesn't matter. I've used the existing pattern except for taking a little bit off the front so it's an edge-to-edge -edge closure. This is set up for buttons. And I've also lengthened it by about an inch just because I'm quite long in the body and this pattern is not. The original pattern has a two-part side, uh, a side front and a side back, which is the side front's actually more of an underarm. I didn't want that, partly because it's one piece on the, the book pattern that I'm using. So I've just kind of combined those together. I'm going to sew these together, try it on, see how it fits, and I have traced out the new side panel that I've made before I do that, so then I can fit it on me and transfer any changes onto this, and then I will have an actual pattern that I can use for the brocade fabric. I've also sketched out what the darts should be, but honestly I'm going to ignore these. I will pinch the darts out when I try it on, just because I'm not the same shape as people think I should be for these kinds of patterns, so it's just easier to do my own darts. And I don't think the darts are going to come into the upper layers particularly, so that should be fine. Hello! Okay, so this is me in my bathroom, because this is the nearest biggest mirror I have access to. Um, let's get this out of there just put the corset on, pinned it up the front. I've picked out these two darts, which should just about do it. There's a lot of extra material in this new side bit that I made, which I have figured out is because I combined the two pattern pieces edge to edge, forgetting they had seam allowance on them. So it's about an inch and a fraction too large. So we can fix that, that's fine. And um, I will amend the pattern that I drew out. Okay, there we go. That is much better. It's a little loose here, but I am wearing a sports bra at the moment, which is 
bad practice, you should not fit garments wearing different undergarments than you're gonna wear at the end. I need to sort out this neckline. It is way too high. Yeah, I'm not really sure why it's so, even if we turn it under, it's still gonna hit me like at my Adam's apple, not where I want it to, which is kind of at the, uh, that bit between your collarbones, the top of your sternum, there. That's, that's that's where I want it to hit, and it's currently way too high. I don't think you can even see it because the strap's in the way. Anyway, happy with this. I'm going to change up the pattern for this panel. All I did was take an inch out of the middle of it, and it's now basically perfect. So that's fine. We're good to go. Almost forgot to uh, turn off the music there. That would have been an exciting way to get my channel taken away. Be in focus. This is just regular printer paper. I didn't have anything fancier, and honestly, for a piece this small, you don't need it. Especially since it turns out this is not only just on regular normal weight paper but was printed on an inkjet which I discovered when I ironed the pattern pieces and the ink transferred onto my ironing board. Woo! Technology. Yeah so I've just sliced straight up the middle. I took out a half inch and then I overlapped it by a half inch so that's an inch out in total which is what I've done on the final thing and then I have, can you see, it's less obvious on that one. So this is the original line, and then this is the original line up here. It was a much broader curve, and I've just redrawn this new line straight down the middle, uh, just even out where that's going to go. I am not an expert pattern drafter by any stretch of the imagination, but little stuff like this is actually really, really easy to do. So yeah, don't be afraid to just hack up your stuff, and it'll probably work out. Okay, well, it's a uh, moment of truth time. This is my least favourite bit of any project, which is the bit where you take the extremely expensive fabric and you put it on the floor. One day I will have a cutting table, not yet. And you start figuring out where you're going to put the pattern pieces. And there's probably an optimal way to do it, but honestly, it's going to be a pain no matter what, especially if, like I am, you're dealing with not as much fabric as you actually need to make this. But it'll be okay. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm basically just gonna have to take a deep breath, fortify, and start cutting. Okay, so we've skipped ahead a little bit. I cut it out and I've started sewing the main pieces together and things got kind of excitingly Lovecraftian for a minute. Because they're at the front and you'll see them, I decided to cut the front pieces all in one but then the back and side pieces, I cut the bodice and then the skirts separately and have now combined the two. Basically what I did is, yes, I'm standing on it because there's literally nowhere else to go. I sewed the back and side panels, which is double the full width of the fabric together. I sewed the back and side bodice panels together and then I sewed the back and side bodice unit and the back and side skirt units to the two front panels, which are all one piece, and somehow managed not to get anything twisted, so it's all orientated correctly, and it's, it's, it's huge. It's so huge. What I'm going to do now is, first of all, I'm going to sort out the hem, which you can't see, but it's kind of uneven and I need to slope in the train, which I tend to only do once everything's sewn together because otherwise it doesn't work. And then I'm going to sew up the shoulders, which I haven't done yet because it's easier to work with everything flat. And then we're going to fit this over the under bodice. I'm going to pleat in the back to the under bodice and then brocade bodice will fold over the top and just kind of be stab stitched down. That's the plan anyway, let's see if it works. Okay, so it's been a moment. I think I last checked in last weekend and forgot to film the rest of the week, which is great. This has come on a lot. I think last time we talked, I was talking about pleating in this back to attach it to the top layer, but also the under bodice. I did that on the machine. It looked terrible. So I unpicked it and I redid it by hand. This is all this, this is, these are, these pleats are triple stacked. There is so much fabric in here. I did all that by hand. And then, because I was already into it, 
Oh, oh the under bodice is still just flopping around. It's basically not attached. I need to, I'll get on to what I still need to do to this in a second. So the front around the neck and everything has been turned down and sewn by hand. I tried it on and realized that it was much wider in the front than I had anticipated. Certainly it didn't, if you look at the picture of the one in the book here, it's got quite a wide gap at the front. Mine didn't have that, I think because I roughly used these shapes, but otherwise worked off the existing pattern that I had. So I just rolled with it. I've sewn up the front seam. So it now is a, a, a full gown that pulls on over the head. This closes pretty much up the front. And also while I was there doing all the hand finishing, I have done the entire hem which took a while, I'm not gonna lie. There's a lot, this is nearly, no it is, the hem is three full widths of the fabric. I think it's some, there's, there's something like four and a half meters of hem in this. So I did all that by hand. Next thing is I need to sort out this under cotton under bodice. So I'm gonna turn the front edges over, finish them. I'm gonna figure out whether this needs bones and I will need to turn it under and attach it to the inside of the bodice, except for at the front where it's they're gonna close independently. If you've seen Victorian bodices go together before, particularly like evening bodices where they've got multiple layers of stuff going on, you'll understand what I mean. If not, stay tuned and you'll see. But before I do that, I need to put in, even though I'm not gonna have the full like front panel, there's still going to be a little bit of a gap at the neck here. So what I'm going to do is a high ruffled collar and a little like panel just to fill in this decolletage area out of my other silk. This guy, which is good because I don't have a lot of this contrast silk. So I'm going to do the little collar. I'm going to sort out the fix the closures at the front. I'm going to decide whether I want buttons up the front of this to close it. Then it's just the sleeves. So it's going to be more like this example picture in that you're going to have the, the, the coppery silk is going to be this gathered under sleeve. And then I've got real sleeves, hanging sleeves, not real sleeves, which also I think need to be hemmed by hand. I was going to line them, but I don't really have any suitable fabric. The back of the brocade's quite nice. So I might not line them, and just let them hang. I kind of wish they were longer, if I'm completely honest, but that's just me being extra. I want everything to be, they, they hang to like my hips, which feels like enough. But also, can you imagine if they hung to the floor? Anyway, that's enough of that. I better crack on. All right, so this is my extremely technical method for figuring out how big I want this uh, insert piece to be. I have hemmed the under bodice. I've laid a piece of cotton over the top. I've traced over in pen because this doesn't matter. The neckline, folded the fronts over, figured out roughly how far down it needs to go, added a bit on because you can't be too careful. And yeah, about this shape. I'm gonna cut this out. I'm gonna fold it in half and even it up so it's kind of symmetrical and um, then that, and a long strip for the collar. That's basically it. Yeah, so check in in a minute or two and I should have a, an, an under, an under collar. I don't actually know what I'm gonna call this. Let's go with under collar. Well, it doesn't look too pretty at the moment, but that is my collar and front panel. This hasn't been attached properly yet. I'm probably just gonna do this by hand. Oh, this is really hard to demonstrate when it's lying flat. This front edge will fasten and then this will flop across and fasten and the collar will just sit like so. The collar is sewn on. I just need to turn this under and sew it down all nice and neat, which again, I will probably do by hand. Hand sewing can happen later. So we're just, we're gonna leave that bit for now. We're gonna start working on the sleeves because once we have the sleeves in, it's just hand sewing all the way down. So turn that and that into sleeves. 
So these are the undersleeves. They're a very, very simple shape. They're actually cut to be much too long for my arms, which means that they'll kind of ruche up and blouse and look nice. The one in the book has sort of shirring around the waist and the, the wrists. I didn't fancy that, so what I've done instead, I've cut a strip of silk, folded the sides under, pressed it down, and I'm going to sew that on to make a channel to run a ribbon through so I can gather it up around my wrists. Then I will seam up the edges. I'm probably going to do a French seam just because I can and this stuff frays a bit. Then of course we've got the hanging sleeves which need hemming all the way around or almost all the way around, don't have to do the top edge. Join the two together, gather them up, sew them into the armholes. Right, I'm not doing the best job of this whole vlogging thing. But uh, here we are. Anyway, so most of yesterday night and this morning was spent hemming these sleeves, all done by hand. The bottom end of the sleeve has got these pleats in it, so when it all... Oh, I'm not going to be able to show you this. It kind of gathers together at the bottom when you hang it. And then I've put some running stitches in there because we're just going to gather it into the armhole of the sleeve. This was not a terribly informative bit of vlog, but I've gone a little bit stir crazy from all that hemming, I'm not going to lie. It's been a hot minute since I last checked in, but we'll just um, pretend that didn't happen and see what we've got up to. So this kind of front neck portion has now been sewn down to the lining. So there's going to be closures behind there. Obviously I've also sewn down this collar, so that's all nicely finished too. I like the little ruffle. I've also gone ahead and got the sleeves, the undersleeves in. Again, that was just by hand. I decided to just turn the ends over so all the raw edges were kind of on the outside, but they are right the way up inside the sleeves here, so I don't think it's going to matter. So I think we are in put on a corset and try it on phase, because I need to figure out how the closure is going to work. I also made a sash, just because there was leftover fabric and I made a sash. Try not to think too hard about how it almost, but not exactly, pattern matches up the front. We just want to think about that now. I had, I only had so much fabric. So as you can see here, we have some lovely hooks and eyes. And then this collar, which this panel comes across with another hook and eye, which I can't undo one-handed. It's more fastening under there. And now I have all of these covered buttons, which I made, and these rouleau loops, which I also made because I hate myself. And we are going to put buttons up the front of this dress. And then I think it will be done, which is very exciting. So now we have buttons and I decided to sew them on in four groups of three. I'd seen that done before on garments and thought it looked pretty neat and felt like giving it a go. So now I just need to sew in the loops and then I think we're done, which is very exciting. But first, loops. And lo, we have loops. These are sewn on horribly because I did them very, very quickly uh, in about half an hour because I just wanted them done. I also put some ribbon down the wrist channels on the undersleeves. It's black because that's the only narrow silk ribbon I had and I'm not able to order much new stuff right now. So I think it's time I tried this on and pray that I don't hate it. I, I don't think I will. I'm feeling good about this decision. So this is an introduction to the weird and wonderful selection of undergarments that I end up wearing at LARP. It's obviously slightly different than what you'd wear as a sort of strict historical costumer because it's mostly what I had. These drawers are 1860s-ish, they're from that one Butterick pattern. I am in fact wearing a modern bra underneath this because without it I don't have a chest at all. This corset is extremely cheap, the main advantage of which is that I can run in it, which is quite important when you're playing a horror game. This is my bustle, it's made from the Laughing Moon pattern with a lot and a lot of extra embellishment. I really recommend the Laughing Moon crinolines and bustle patterns. It's served me very well over the years. This is my petticoat, which is specifically made for this character because you can't play a Victorian horror game without Victoriana horror themed petticoats. Yeah, that's totally how that works.
and then I put on that underskirt that I was working on anyway because, well, I made a pretty roughly underskirt and more floof. You won't see it when it's worn. Very important shoegle. I'll spare you me putting on my shoes. And then it's time for the dress itself. This was only the second time I'd put this dress on in its full glory. There were definitely some teething problems. It's taken me way too long to put this all on. Which is okay, because it gives me some time to talk to you about different things that I might have liked to have done differently, or I might fix. So I'm not a massive fan of how the collar flips out so you can see the blue lining. But that's me going to find a mirror, because I can't do some of these hooks and eyes up without extra help. In hindsight, I should have stiffened this collar a lot more, but I wanted this to be kind of comfortable. So I'm probably going to put a very fine white ruffle on the inside just to kind of cover it up and look like a chemise or some kind of medieval smock. I'm also not a massive fan of how the hanging sleeves are. I think they were actually too wide and I should have gone for more length, but I'm going to press those pleats again and press them much further up the sleeves. I may connect them together at the back as well. The original dress I was inspired by also has tassels on the sleeves, which I think if I can find something heavy enough, that might help the overall shape. The back of the dress is pulling away from my back because the weight of the train is so heavy. And I didn't realize until I was putting it on that I had never attached the back of the brocade layer to the back of the underbodice which would help that so much. So what I will probably do in the relatively near future is uh, sort that out. No, wait, there I go to find a mirror again. Honestly, it would do quite a lot for the fit of the dress and um, the slight sort of gaping that I had in the front there. I just sewed that all in. can see me sort of attempting to fix it with the sash. So there you are. That is my finished Victorian tea gown for lounging around in dramatically before breakfast, which I finished almost just in time for my game, which was then cancelled because of the coronavirus. So instead I have a wonderful Victorian gown for lounging around the house in and second-guessing myself every time I cough because of hay fever. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Hello. You're on camera.